بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين All praises due to Allah We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness and we send salutation upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and all those who follow his footsteps till the day of judgment First of all, جزاكم الله خير Brothers for attending to your own diwaniyya, Friday diwaniyya and alhamdulillah from a couple of weeks we are going through the series of the uh, Sheikh Abbas Batawi, uh, the one who's, uh, mashallah, doing the voluntary uh, work in Jeddah Cemetery, the biggest uh, cemetery in Jeddah. And he is narrating his stories from, you know, his experience of 30 years that he is going through the ghassal uh, amwat, the, the uh, giving ghusl to the dead people. And he is going through the different cases and different scenarios. So, <coughs> one of the one of the stories uh, that he narrated, and of course everything that he's saying, uh, obviously uh, there is no doubt in it. He himself witnessed, and he saw in his life all these things. And uh, what I'm mentioning to you, things that inshallah ta'ala we take ibrah from it, and things that are sometimes uh, really uh, kind of uh, difficult to believe. But this is this is the fact. Uh, if you remember one of the one of the stories uh, that we spoke about that the dead body refuses to go to the grave and 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 how it's possible uh, and subhanallah the sheikh mentioned uh, the long story and we spoke about it so today's uh, or tonight's story also is about the dead body that moves the dead body that moves and how how it's possible now and and uh, how we can you know, understand this. Sheikh Abbas received a call from Mughassila, from a female, the one who gives the ghusl to the woman. And uh, she is kind of in a, in a, you know, situation that is really difficult for Sheikh to, to understand. She is kind of uh, talking quickly, uh, breathing heavily. And she says, Sheikh, Sheikh, I'm, I'm not going to give ghusl. I'm not going to give ghusl to someone who's alive. So, the Sheikh says, calm down, what's wrong, calm down, I'm not going to give ghusl, that's it. Uh, because Sheikh Abbas, he is the manager of, of the, the entire uh, cemetery. So, so this lady is calling and she says, I cannot do this job. What happened? She said, no, I cannot give ghusl to someone who's, who's alive. So she said, what happened? Tell me. Take it, take it easy and tell me what happened. So she said, first of all, I want you to call the doctor from the... Uh, red uh, crescent, you know, Hilal Al Ahmar. I want the doctor to come here and, and, and to check the body. She said, Yeah, but this is a big responsibility. Like, you know, when we call them and the doctor comes and nothing is there, you know, you know they, will, they, they make uh, a big deal out of it, they make an issue. She said, Well, you have to call him, uh, you, call, you have to call the doctor because the body is moving. She said, so the Sheikh says, how, how the body is moving? You tell me. So, uh, she starts telling that she's, when the body comes normally, they bring it on, on the moving, moving bed, you know, that, uh, with the wheels, right? I don't know what they call it, the scratchers. So, so they are bringing the, uh, the, the body, and then how they give the ghusl, they carry the body to the tub, right? To the place where... And how they carry the body, the Sheikh is explaining that, you know, normally it's like even maybe you saw that how they move a patient from one bed to another bed, you know. So they will put a piece of coffin under the head and another piece of the coffin under the waist or under the uh, back and then another piece of coffin at the, at the leg and they will carry it and they will put it. So while they are doing this and they just want to carry this body, literally the body, while, while it's laying down on the, on the scratchers, literally the body holds the scratchers. At that moment, the woman couldn't believe, the, the Mughassila, the female uh, lady who was giving the ghusl. Uh, what, what just happened? So she just backed out and the family members started crying. There was like a daughter, there was uh, some, some uh, niece and nephews, and who, uh, n uh, sorry, niece uh, and the other, other uh, woman. They start crying. So she couldn't believe that this happened. Imagine, dead body, while you're just about to carry the body to the maqsala, to the tub, 
the body holds the, 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 the scratches from the both sides. So she backed out. She said, uh, you know, something is wrong. Then after crying and after this first shock that they got, the lady said, let me try it once again. And the lady is saying, the body, the body of this lady, it's very light, very light and skinny. And six of us, we, we were unable to hold and carry her. They did the same thing again. They want to carry the body. And again, the second time, the body holds the scratcher. At this time, she said, Wallahi, I, I swear by Allah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take care or, or do ghusl for someone who's alive. So she went to the corner and she started you know, uh, crying and she said, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Until they called the Sheikh or she called the Sheikh. So the Sheikh says, okay. In this case, I will call the Red Crescent and, and the doctor will come. After some time, the doctor came, female doctor, and she went and she saw the body and she saw the papers. She said the body is exactly dead and, and at the same time, at the same date, and exactly the same. She says, no, I'm not going to give us. You say the body is dead, the person is not moving, but I saw literally and these people saw that this body is, is moving. And the sheikh from the other side on the phone, the sheikh, khalas, no problem, go ahead. She said, I'm not going to give ghusl. To this body, I'm not going to give ghusl. So the sheikh said, okay, you know what? Go tell the girls and tell the knees to do the ghusl while you're sitting there. Just give them the instructions what to do. So while she is there talking to the sheikh, another lady came and from the family member. She came and sat next to this mughassila, this lady. And she's trying to just tell him to calm down, calm down. So the lady started asking that, you know, wh what's wrong with this lady? Like, what's her story? Who's her friend? What she used to do? And this is normally Sheikh Abbas and his team normally, when they see these kind of uh, incidents, they want to know what this man or what this woman used to do. So they will, they will get the ibra, they will get the lesson. So this lady, who's the family member of the, that uh, dead body, she said like, you know, it's not your business. We brought you here to do, or we, we called you to do the ghusl, not to investigate with us, not to ask us questions. And she's saying that while the sheikh is on the phone. So sheikh heard the same thing. So the sheikh said to this lady, Mughassila, that tell her that, you know, you will be responsible in front of Allah Almighty on the Day of Judgment. If, if you, you, you will not tell us what's wrong with this lady, what she used to do, then you will be responsible on the Day of Judgment. So that word made her a little bit, you know, uh, in, in, in fear of Allah Almighty. And then she said, you know, I will tell you, I will tell you everything, but let, let the process go. They did the process and everything happened. Okay, done. But again, the Mughassila, she went all the way to the, to the lady and she said, see, you promised me to tell me what exactly uh, this lady used to do. So now, this lady, now she's a daughter. She's a daughter of that lady. She said, see, our mother, she is praying all the time. She is fasting, you know, most of the day or a couple of days in the, in the month. And she is, mashallah, very wonderful lady. Except she have something very little. Now that very little is for her, for that daughter. She thinks that's something very little that, that she is involved in. And this is what she used to do in her life. She says, what's that? So I said, my mother, she enjoys to do the namima. What is namima? Is carrying out the talk and putting it and, and taking it to someone else. So she hears something from, let's say, uh, you know, yeah, Asma uh, uh, against uh, Sarah. So she will hear everything from Asma. She goes and she tells Sarah that Asma said this, this, this to you. And when Asma says, oh, really? And she is this and she is that. She will carry everything from Asma and she is uh, from, uh, from Sarah and she will take it to the Asma, for example. So this is called Namima. You know, we have two things in, in Islam. We have Ghiba, backbiting. Namima is carrying out things. So this is my mother used to do in, in to extend that people, they know my mother by name, that you know, if this lady is in, in a place, then, then definitely that two people, two families, two friends, they will, they will fight. They will have some, some problem with one another. In to extend that my mother used to go to the weddings that she's not invited to. Just because she knows 
that there are ladies and some ladies, you know, there is so and so and so and so and they have not good relation with one another. So purposely she goes and sit with that lady and she will, you know, poke her to say something bad about her. And then she will carry everything to that lady and will say everything against the other lady. And most of the time she comes at home and, you know, the ladies in Arab uh, culture, there is something, you know, they, they, when they are so happy, uh, when, it, when there's a wedding, they, they do, you know, uh, they make noises uh, from, from the tongue, you know, they, uh, like they, they cover their mouth and they, they make noises, right? You know, I'm, I'm sure what, you, uh, what I'm saying. So she comes at home and she's making that noise, you know. So what happened, mom, what happened? I made these two, you know, ladies to fight with each other. Imagine, that was the happiness, that was the enjoyment of that lady. When she comes home, she is making that noise and, and that sound that um, uh, I made these two people fight with one another. Not into that extent. Furthermore, she reached to the level that she is making two brothers from the same mother and father fighting with one another. Two sisters from the same mother and father fighting with one another. She goes to one sister, that how come your father bought for you uh, a dress that has cost, let's say, $200, but the other you know, sister of yours, your father bought for her for $1,000, for example. So they are, she, she's you know, charging both of them against each other, so they will hate each other, they will hate the father, and she do the same. She goes to the brothers, that how come you know, your, your family member or your father bought for you a, a Toyota, and the other brother is, is you know, having a Lexus, for example. So she went to the extent that she is destroying the houses. When she heard this, the lady, Mughassila, the one who gave the ghusl, she informed the sheikh to the sheikh, says like, you know, why don't you tell the, the family members, the daughters, that let her fear Allah Almighty while she was living. Like, let her fear Allah, you know, tell her about yani, ghiba, namima, and, and all these things, and the, the, the level of, uh, you know, sin that you will get. So the daughter says, Wallahi, we called Mashayikh at home. We called Mashayikh on the phone and put on the speaker. We got cassettes, we got CDs. Into the extent that one day our mother told us, when, when we were telling her that, that, you know, mother, you have to stop this, you have to stop this. What happened? That the family member all decided that we leave this house and we go to another area because our name our uh, reputation in the entire area is now yeah, nothing, is, is like crap, completely, completely because of our mother. And, and almost everyone in the neighborhood, they are, they, they are fighting with one another because of our mother. So you know what, the best solution is to change our house. So when they decided and they went, went to the mother and says, let's remove, let's, let's just go and move to some, some other place, she says, why? Say, you know, why are you saying why? You know why? Because no one loves us. No one wants to talk to us. Our reputation is, you know, nothing. So she said, see, you don't, you don't have to advise me. Now, this is the mother saying, the one who died. She said, you don't have to advise me. It is between me and Allah and I will deal with Allah. Imagine, not the other way around. Not that Allah will deal with me. I will deal with Allah. You don't have to tell me what to do and what not to do. So subhanAllah, she reached into that extent that says, you, know, you don't have to talk to me and you don't have to tell me I'm your mother and something that I'm doing is between me and Allah, I will deal with Allah. As she's saying, you know, I will deal with my brother or I will deal with my sister, you know, I will deal with Allah Almighty. And, and when she died, this is exactly what happened with her. That subhanAllah twice happened or maybe more than that, that the body, these, these people, you know, six women, they want to carry the body of a thin lady and they couldn't hold it and, and twice the body hold the scratcher that you know they want or the body doesn't want to come to the place of the maqsala because you know what's coming you know next and subhanallah this is end of the story and then I was, I was pondering upon the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he, he told us you know in, in different places about especially namam you know that, that's the worst you know we know the ghiba is at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know described uh, to us that you know you mention about your brother who's not you know in, in the place in the gathering and I tell something about him that he does not like so maybe I'll call someone you know that yeah fat little guy this and that and maybe he is fat you know so I'm not lying 
But when I say that fat guy, that this, that that, he does not like to hear that word, you know, that people to call him. This is what riba is, and and the the, the punishment of riba is is altogether it's something else. So the punishment of namima, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith and it's narrated in Ahmed and Muslim and a couple of uh, hadith, which is authentic hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ was walking and he stopped at the two qabr, at the two graves. And he looked at the companion and he said, these two people of this qabr, they've been going through in a tournament. They are going through the punishment. And for them, it was not a big deal, as this you know, sister said. You know, she was not doing you know something big. She is a good woman. She she was a good mother. She used to pray, etc., etc. But she was involved in namima. For her, it was something small. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Wama uh, yu'adibani bi kabir," means like these people they used to think it's not not a big deal. The one person he never used to clean himself after you know uh, urinating, and the other person. كان يمشي بين الناس بالنميمة He used to walk between the people with namima. Means like carrying out this word and throwing it to other person and when other, other person is saying something else he goes and he give it to the other person. And the Prophet ﷺ said these people going through the tournament of the Qabr all the way when they will reach to the Day of Judgment. And there is another hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he saw the people of uh, in Isra and uh, Mi'raj when he went all the way and he saw uh, the people going through uh, difficult uh, you know uh, time and the punishment and also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told about the ghiba and namima those who are going through these uh, used to do these ghiba and namima in the dunya they are going through the punishment in the uh, uh, Jahannam so Subhanallah, sometime, unfortunately, we get into this, uh, you know, the, the main point to mention this story is to reflect on ourselves that sometime we don't realize, you know, and, and we just listen something from someone and we go and say to someone else. And, and we think that it's normal. And we don't know by this carrying out and, and taking a word from this person and taking it to other person, even with a good intention, it might cause some problem with the two other brothers that I, I just, you know, transformed and I, I work as a mandub. You know, I'm, I'm taking it from here, giving it here, taking it from here and give it, giving it here. And most of the time when we think, you know, it's, it's completely fine, I have a good intention. Yeah, but that good intention, uh, maybe the consequences of that good intention with these two brothers or these two parties or these two family members, it might end up in something big. So, subhanAllah, yani, and, and we can see what happened with this body uh, of, of, the, of the lady and, and, and yeah, I couldn't even imagine that how come a dead body imagine imagine now you imagine dead body if you want to move it it moves it moves or, or, or it holds itself uh, subhanallah and it's unbelievable but this happened with Sheikh Abbas or with the, with the lady that who told Sheikh Abbas and this shows that you know she knows now what's coming next what is waiting for her in the Qabr, in the Barzakh, and all the way to the hereafter. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are always knowing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the commandments of Allah, implementing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life, and trying to be away from, from all these things that unknowingly some people fall into it, either it's uh, backbiting, either it's uh, carrying the words and... and, and uh, placing it to different places. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ said also, you know, that, that uh, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانَ In another hadith, that try to be brethren in the, in the Islam, you know. We all have differences, we all think differently. But Alhamdulillah, our Rabb is one, our Rasul is one, our Quran is one, our Deen is one. Then still, uh, the Shaitan is successful to come and do the taharrush, as, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three things. So Allah accepted two and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't accept the third one. That is, shaitan is doing the taharrush fima baynakum. That shaitan is coming and whispering to you against your brother, against your other you know, uh, person in Islam and making, uh, making, making that successful uh, or that specific uh, mission successful. So uh, we have to, you know, uh, especially those, I'm, I'm talking to my brothers, especially those who are in a da'wah field, those who are, mashallah, yani praying five times a day, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan is really good to, to you know, make it, make it uh, 
uh, work in that way, that to come to you and, and make you think bad about a single word maybe other person said, knowingly or unknowingly, but you will, he will make it a big deal out of, out of it in your heart. And it goes on and on with the other people, so just cut that, that waswasa from the shaitan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those that the Prophet sallallahu says, Kunu ibadallahi ikhwana wa jazakumullahu khairan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.